Let me show you how to identify the wires, the coils, the polarities of some pickup that you're either it's completely unknown to you or you're not quite sure of before you install it. So what I have here, I'm going to start with anyway, are a couple of pickups out of an old uh, kind of early 90s PV Impact Milano. These are the original pickups from that guitar. I took them out with the rings because I what I replaced them with uh, had I used the triple shot rings from Seymour Duncan, so I took the whole thing out. But I did label the back of these neck and bridge, so I know which ones which. I can also tell from the way the wires come off of them that uh, that gives me a little bit of a clue as to which one was oriented where. But uh, I've got the screw coils on the outsides and the uh, slug coils on the insides. This would be. Uh, neck side, this would be bridge side, and they have got their four wire, four conductor pickups with a bare wire as well. So they look kind of typical colors, uh, black, red, white, green, and then there's a bare. I've put a uh, piece of shrink wrap over the bare, but uh, to start with, I've got a DMM. If there's a bare wire, you can pretty much assume that that's going to be a ground wire. That's just going to be connected somewhere internally just to the uh, the frame of the pickup. So that's always going to be ground. It's always just going to be tied to the you know back of a volume pot or something of that nature that's your ground wire. So what we need to figure out is which ones, which of these wires is connected to which coils and I'm even going to go through the uh, checking the magnetic polarity of them as well. So to start with, just start randomly connecting. I've got the meter set at 40k. These are fairly hot pickups, but uh, either way, I know that a single coil is higher than than 4k on this pickup. So uh, I'm just going to go with 40 as a good starting point. I just happened to grab two pickups that give me continuity. So white, I mean two wires that give me continuity. White and black are 7.9K, so I know that's one of the coils. Now you can just leave one of those on and check continuity to each other wire. That's actually a good idea to make sure there are no shorts. Uh, you should only have one pair that gives you continuity. And that's it. Black and white is one of them. Probably would make sense at this point to start gonna get out a piece of paper and start writing things down. So if black and white are one pair, then pretty obviously red and green is going to be the other pair. So that's the other coil. On this particular pickup it's pretty close. Pretty close to being the same DC. One thing I want to do while I'm here is just go ahead and check from now that I know which pairs are which I still want to go through check from wire to wire to wire. Check every wire including that bare ground. Check that one as well check every wire against every other wire and you should only have continuity to one other wire. Just make sure you don't have a shorted coil. There's my uh, other pair, red and, red and green R coil. And just kind of go through that wire by wire over and over. Save yourself some heartache and don't install the pickup until you've confirmed that it actually is a good pickup. Alright, so now that I know that black and white is one pair and red and green is the other, how do I know what the polarities are? If I'm going to use these as a typical series humbucker, I've got to tie two of those wires together and use one of the other wires as a hot and one of them as a ground. So how, will, how do I know that? Well, here's where have, going old school works a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and bring in this is where an old analog voltmeter comes in handy. Now this particular one says my Kront on it. I'm going to assume that means this was a Radio Shack meter from way back in the day. I've had this meter for, I don't know, 30 years. And you can do this with a, with a DMM and I'll, I think I'll show that as well. It's a lot easier on with the analog. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up, uh, I've got a black and a white. I'm going to make an assumption then say black is my ground and white is my hot lead so I'm going to hook up black to black and my red lead to the white. I've got this particular meter on the smallest DC voltage scale that it can do which in this particular case is 
0.25 volts. I'm going to go DC voltage on the meter because actually that's a much smaller scale is really the, the main reason I'm doing that. You can do this on AC volts as well. Smallest scale there is 10 volts though. And then there's this meter has a divided by two switch. So I'm going to with 0.25 volts and then divided by two. So it's 0.125. That's the smallest voltage range I get. You're not going to get a lot of voltage off these pickups. So you need to have a meter that's sensitive enough that you can go all the way down. What I use is this quarter inch um, socket driver. You could use kind of a typical steel shafted screwdriver like this old Craftsman, uh, something with a fairly beefy shaft on it. You're not going to get much action out of, you know, something like this. I like this one because this gets me the best movement. It's, uh, I think it's a, got a little more mass. It's a bigger piece of metal. Any, anything that's uh, magnetic is going to work, but this is, this tends to be what I use for this test. So now that I've got this connected up, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to touch it flat onto one of the coils. What you're seeing already is when I do this on the screw coil, I get a pretty good jump. If I just leave it there, it eventually decays off. It kind of goes up positive and stays there and then drifts back. When I touch the other one, I get a little bit of a response, but not much. You, you can expect to see that just like if you're testing. Uh, if you've got the pickups installed and connected up and you're tapping on the coils, you'll hear a little noise on sometimes on the other coils even though they're not on. But you can see a pretty obvious thing. Now the other thing to notice there is it's going, the meter's going positive when I touch and it pulls negative when I pull off. If I were to have hooked this up red to black and black to white, if I weren't sure, when I touch this it goes negative and then comes back up. And when I pull off it goes positive. That's reverse polarity. So what I know about this now is black and white is the is the screw terminal, I mean the screw coil, and the black wire is the ground wire and the white wire is the is the hot wire. So black is negative, white is positive. That's what I know about that. So now let's check out red and green. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that red is plus and green is minus. Let's see if I'm right. Yep. Okay, so on the slug coil, you know, same thing. I get, I get a little bit of movement out of the screw coil, but on the slug coil, I get significantly more. It goes positive when I touch it, it goes negative when I pull it off. So at that point, you know which ones are plus and minus. To run them in series, it actually doesn't matter which one you start with. It does in some wiring situations. I'm not going to get bogged down into that, but for the purposes of just installing it as a humbucker or even a humbucker with a split, I could pick either one to be the start and finish. Typically, at least in the world of Seymour Duncan, that screw coil, the outside coil, when they would go, when, typically when they're in the screw coils or the outside, this is the bridge pickup, so this would be the outside. This would be, um, this would be the south coil, and it would be connected to ground. And the inside is the north coil, and that's the hot. So in this situation, if black and white are my screw coil, and black is the minus and white is the positive, is the plus, I'm going to tie that black wire to ground and then the white wire is going to be my serial, my series link to the other coil. Now my other coil is red and green. I know that green is minus and plus and red is plus plus. So that red wire is going to be my hot output lead off to the um, either the pickup switch or volume pot if we're doing independent volumes, whatever it is. So in this particular case I'm going to be tying black, I'm sorry, I'm going to be tying green and white together as my series link. That's what you're going to tie to ground if you're splitting, tie to the output if you're splitting. This and So on this particular pickup, black is going to be ground, red is going to be hot out, white and green are tied together. What you do is you go minus plus 
minus plus when you tie them in series. So black is minus, white is plus, green is minus, red is plus. You could, and in some situations it actually works out better, you could do it the other way around. Green could be your minus that's tied to ground. That red that is the plus of that slug coil would then be tied to black because that's the minus of the other coil. And then the white would be the hot output. So either way actually works. It just depends on what your wiring situation is, on which coils you want to have, uh, whether you want to do different splits or sometimes depending on when you're connecting single coils together between pickups, you want to have the magnetic polarities opposite. And let's, let's kind of talk about that now. I believe on this other pickup, actually, you know, I don't remember if this was the same. So now this is the neck pickup, which is going to be installed with a screw coil on the outside, slug coil on the inside. Let's just, uh, let's just check this out. I'm actually going to be, I can use this one meter to do both. If I make the assumption that black is minus and white is positive, on the other pickup that was the screw coil. And now what I'm getting is reverse polarity. Very interesting. So if I go over to green and red, same thing. Okay, so that's interesting. So this pickup is actually wired reverse. This is why you do these things. So on this pickup, just to be very confusing, same colored wires are the same coils. Red and green are the slug and white and black are the screw is the screw coil but now the polarities are reversed so when I wire this one together I would actually reverse all of those wires and go through that whole process so the other piece of this puzzle just remember that always you're always going to go minus to plus minus to plus so one of those minuses gets tied to ground its plus gets tied to the other coil's minus, and that coil's plus gets tied to the, the output or the switch or however you're wiring. Okay, now let's talk about let's talk about the magnetic polarity. In this room, if I get these magnets all get everything away from it. In this room, magnetic north is about there. It's going this way which works well for me because I can sit here then and I can work against that and and very quickly see the see that needle turn when I bring the magnet in. The confusing part about magnets is our north pole of the earth is a south magnet is a south magnet. So the thing that would seem obvious at least to me when I started doing this was you go down to a store and you buy this five dollar compass that has a red needle that points north and it seemed pretty obvious to me to think well if it points north that's a north magnet it's actually just to be confusing not on this on the earth that we live on the north pole is a south magnet so this red needle points to a south magnet not to a north magnet so if i bring this in that needle just turns it turns immediately as i bring in I bring in the, the pickup and it points directly to the slug. So that's the south magnet. And as I as you as you move it around, it flips all the way around. So the screw coil is actually a north magnet. So in this case the inside is a south. And well, is, is that the inside of the this is the neck pickup. So this is so the in, that, that inside coil is a, is a south and an outside coil is a north. Let's take a look at the bridge. Here's the bridge pickup. Its outside coil is a source, a south, and its inside is a north. So it goes north-south, left to right, and this guy goes 
north, south, left to right. Now that's different than a typical Seymour Duncan or Gibson humbucker. And the reason for that is this guitar was originally set up with a five-way pickup selector switch and some of those positions gave you single coils in parallel. I don't remember if it had any single coils in series. So this, these pickups are actually set up the way uh, like a PRS pickup would be, at least the way they used to make them, where they go north-south, north-south. And the reason for that is when you start, if, if you've just got a, like a, a Les Paul and you are only using it as you know, three-way switch and a couple of humbuckers, there's no coil split switches and nothing fancy, it's just a standard thing, it doesn't really matter you're only going to mix them together as humbuckers all you really care about is the electrical phase getting them in phase with each other so when you put them both on together they're in phase but if you start splitting coils ideally you would like to have a north coil and a south coil together even if you're connecting them in parallel because then they still maintain some hum canceling properties so what PV did with these pickups is the reason they're doing north-south, north-south is that way when you have, if you put the two inside coils in parallel, you have a south and a north. You have two different uh, magnetic polarities and they will maintain some hum canceling capability. If you put the outside coils together in series or parallel, you get a, a north and a south. Uh, Typical Seymour Duncan and Gibson pickups, the Norths are the inside, the slugs are the North coils, the North magnet, and the outsides, the screw coils, have South magnets. So if you start mixing those, you get a insides to inside, you get South and a South, and if you put the outsides together, you get a North and a North. And while that will work, and they'll be electrically in phase with each other, and they'll sound fine, they won't have the hum canceling property. So that's why people will go in and either change the splits so you get you know both forward pickups forward coils or both bridge side coils together because then you would end up with a north and a south combined or that's why people will flip the magnets and flip the phase do some wiring things to get some different things but these particular pickups are set up north south north south and that's why they're set up like that one other thing I want to mention in regard to magnets on a humbucker like this the magnet is actually a, a long flat magnet that's inside the pickup. The pole pieces aren't magnets. On a single coil, very often the, the pole pieces themselves are the magnets. On these humbuckers, the standard construction is it's a long flat magnet that's inside there and it touches internally these sets of the, screw, screw, the screws and the slugs and magnetizes them. And the north and south poles of that magnet are actually the sides. You kind of tend to think of this long flat bar magnet as having a, a north end and a south end. It's actually the edges, if you will, that are magnetized. That's why you end up with the magnetization working the way it is, where one set of, you know, the slugs have one pol magnetic polarity and the screws have another. It's because that's the way that magnet is configured inside there. Let me show you the way this would work with a, with a DMM, with a digital multimeter. So I've got this set to 400 millivolts DC and I've just got it connected here to the red to red and green to black. I don't remember which pickup this is and I, I don't, I'm just going to grab this and see what happens. So if I start laying this flat onto the different coils. What I'm seeing here, is you can tell it's a lot easier with the with the analog just to see the motion. I don't get a lot of response on this on the screw coils. I get a significant, a, a lot bigger number out of that. And then what we're watching for is whether it's going negative or positive. So when I touch onto it, I get a big spike of negative voltage, and when I pull off, I get a spike of positive voltage. Uh, goes up to, I mean, we're not, we're not talking a lot here, 120, 140 millivolts. So you can see that in its, when I touch it, it's going negative. When I'm pulling off, it's going positive. So I've got that one reversed. So on this particular pickup, uh, red 
is actually the ne is, is the minus the negative lead and green as the positive lead and when I do it now I should see a big spike of positive and pull off and see a negative positive voltage negative voltage and again I see a little bit of a positive spike and negative sp on the screw terminal but we're talking much smaller numbers okay so now let's take a look at the black and white pair I'm gonna connect red my red test clip lead to the black and the black to the white and this should be now the screw terminal the screw coil I get a positive jump and a negative when I pull off positive when I touch negative when I pull off similar kind of thing there but I'm only getting you know five minus four plus nine minus four on this side I'm getting plus 66 minus 43 plus 113 minus 49 so you can do this with a DMM it's a little easier to see visually with the analog but that should get you where you want to be just uh, in summary just make sure you check every wire against every other every other wire check it first with uh, DC resistance figure out which wires are connected to which coils or at least which wires are are a, a coil make sure that there are no shorts between the wires and between the ground wire and then from there you can go to a small voltage scale get yourself something that's a good a metal object that's mag you know a steel object or iron object so you can start so you can determine which coil is connected to which wires both which coil is connected to which wires and then what the polarity is on that and then if you need to bring in your magnet if it's important to you in your application to know which if you're going to be connecting single coils together use your magnet and figure out which coils are your north and your south thanks for watching